Okay, so we had to take this thing home because we have a huge blizzard where we live right now. We got like several feet of snow in the past week or so. So we couldn't make it into the shop. So we're going to be doing some of the next steps at home. So you'll have to suffer through the bad lighting. My apologies. Alright, I promise you guys that sometime in our next video, I will have a new camcorder. The camera that I have now has not been doing a very great job, so hopefully that one will fix some of our image quality issues. Anywho, to finish off making our mirrors, all we did was take our reflective film and put it underneath our plexiglass, then traced around it with a razor blade to get the exact shape of the plexiglass. When you're putting this stuff on, just take your time. You only get one shot at it, and you don't want too many wrinkles in your film. To make sure that our mirrors stayed nice and secure in the recesses that we routed out earlier, we just used some good old fashioned goop. Typically you'd want to use a clear silicone of some sort to secure them, but goop worked just fine for us. And that's pretty much it for getting your mirrors done. Once you get your very first one finished, it's just a rinse and repeat process. So as usual, you know I had to try and get some wood burning on this project somewhere. And the method I used might be a little bit unorthodox to other people who've wood burned before. Typically when you want to wood burn any sort of designs that you've printed off the internet, you'll transfer the ink onto the wood before you burn it. I however have not learned this process yet and I'm not sure if we even have the tools to do it. So I just duct taped the designs to our wood and then wood burned right through the piece of paper and peeled it off later. It's probably not as effective as just transferring the ink to the wood, but it worked pretty good for me. One small piece of equipment that I used a lot when I was wood burning was the shading tip. This small extension of my wood burner came with the kit that I bought off of Amazon. I personally love this little wood burning kit as it comes with a bunch of different little tools that are great for if you're just getting into wood burning, especially with a noob like me. I still have a lot to learn. So once we were finally able to get back to the shop, we had to make our top mirror which was going to use the same process that we used for our sides. It's literally just the same thing, the only difference was the shape of the plexiglass and how we routed it out. This routed section underneath our top piece definitely took a lot longer, but Dad just had to be patient and just push through until he got it done. Another thing we got done while we had the router out was carve out a small little section for our electrical wire to sit in. That was just going to be for our light bulb and it was going to sit underneath the plexiglass. Okay guys, so uh, we kind of made a little bit of a boo-boo when we were designing this thing. As it turns out, we made this thing way bigger than a regular size lamp. As it turns out, lampshades that fit this size lamp are kind of hard to come by. So we had to grab this boring giant lampshade from Shopco. And FYI, my mom, his wife, really did not like this lampshade. <laughs> you don't like it? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, fine then. Yeah. So we're going to doctor it up later on. But for right now, Dad's going to make a block to help raise this lampshade up so that it's not sitting on here like this. It's got to sit up like that. In order for us to get our lampshade to fit right, we had to cut off our extension with a die grinder and then fabricated a small wooden block out of some scrap pieces that we had lying around. At first, the color of the wood really didn't match our lamp that well, so we just took a blowtorch to it and that seemed to fix the problem. If you're going to secure your wires with a staple gun like we did, just be careful and make sure that you have staples that are wider than your wire and don't actually shoot them through. We didn't do that, thankfully, but if you do, you'll have to get a new light bulb and new electronics. Oh. 
Since this was our first time building this project, we forgot to make our little mirror for the bottom before we attached our cage. So we had to take measurements of each individual side and then trace it out on our plexiglass so that we could cut it out on the bandsaw. When sticking your LEDs to your mirrors, make sure that it's actually on the mirrors and not the wood, because the wood will most likely flake off over time and the LEDs will fall off, making it a very big pain to go in and try and change them later. As I stated earlier, my mom really hated this lampshade. So what we kind of did to doctor it up is cut out these little sea creature shapes with an X-Acto knife and then pin them to the lampshade so that we could spray a gold colored paint over it. This might not have been the best solution, but I think it seemed to appease my mom. So I guess it kind of worked. Next level. One thing that I will say is that if you're going to go with the remote controlled light bulb and the remote controlled LEDs, get two different brands. The two different sets that we bought came with the same remote, which kind of messed up the other's frequency, and so we kind of struggled to get one remote to control its counterpart. Sometimes the light bulb remote would control the LEDs, and sometimes the LED remote would control the light bulb. So I'll make sure that I put two different branded links down in the description below so that you guys, if you do want to build this, you don't buy the same and you end up with the problem that we had. Next level.